Hi there, YouTube community, and welcome to this very first episode of the Underwater Filmmaking School. My name is Matthias, I'm an underwater cinematographer based here in Zurich, Switzerland, and I'm very happy to talk to you about the importance of light when filming underwater today. Coming up. First of all, I would like to thank our two sponsors of this video today. On one hand, this is um, the underwater photography and videography store Fantic here in Sirnach, Switzerland. They're sponsoring the location that we're filming this episode at today. And on the other hand, it is the um, video light producer Scuba Lamp from China that we will be talking about their products in a little while, a little more in detail. So when we talk about filmmaking or filming underwater, the question comes up, well, why do we need to have extra lights with us as we go down underwater with our camera rig? Now, if you guys have taken a scuba diving course in the past, you will probably remember your instructor telling you that the deeper down you go, the less ambient light there will be. Also, the deeper down you go, the more colors will disappear, starting with the color red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and so on. So for that reason, it is very important that if we wanna get decent looking footage underwater, we need to bring an artificial light source with us that will illuminate, lighten up our scenes again so that we can get an image that looks as natural as possible. Now, depending very much on what kind of camera system and setup you're using, you will be choosing your video lights according to this. Now, when it comes to choosing the appropriate underwater light for your needs, there is a few things that you need to consider. One of the things that need to be considered is the width of the beam. Now, different lights will have different angles in which they distribute their light. Some of them will only have, for example, a 90 degree light beam. Other ones will have up to 120 or even 130 degrees of light beam. Another important indicator of the quality of the light is how much it can actually output. Now the output, the energy that a light actually gives out is measured in what we call lumen. The higher the lumen number is, the more light your video light can output and the more it will illuminate your scenes underwater. Now usual video light for underwater can range anywhere between 1000, 2000 lumen up to about 24,000 lumen or more, which as you can see is a fairly big difference. One of the most important things to consider when buying an underwater video light is the CRI or color rendering index. What does it say? It basically says how true the light that comes out of your video light is compared to regular sunlight. Now obviously you want to have this as accurate and as true to normal sunlight as possible. This number is measured up to an index of 100, which equals regular normal sunlight. The higher or the closer your number gets to the 100 mark, the better that light will perform in any underwater scenario. Lastly, Kelvin is also a thing that needs to be considered when purchasing a underwater video light. Now what Kelvin does or what Kelvin stands for, it gives you an indication of the color temperature of the light that you're using. So it will basically tell you by looking at the number of Kelvin, it will basically tell you whether you're shooting with a cold, a neutral or a warm light. Now you typically want to get something around the range of 5600 Kelvin, which is um, normal daylight. That's the ideal light that you want to have for shooting underwater. Obviously, there is also a lot more factors that do need to be considered when purchasing an underwater video light. Factors like the size, the weight, the deform factor of the light, also its buoyancy characteristics. All these kind of things need to be considered. Now, in our opinion, what you should do when you purchase um, a new underwater video light, like with any other piece of equipment, Go to your local video store, preferably underwater video or photography store, and 
just grab the light that you want to buy and see if you can take it for a test dive. See how it behaves in the environment that it's intended to be working in. Um, also make sure that you test the light uh, at higher frame rates. All, basically all video lights nowadays are made out of LEDs and especially the cheaper LEDs, they tend to flicker when you shoot at higher frame rates. So our tip there is take the light, go to a local lake, go to an ocean if you're close by an ocean and test that light and see whether it really performs the way that the manufacturer promises. Between Tom, Sebastian and myself, we have uh, a ton of experience filming with different underwater video lights from various manufacturers. And personally, I have changed to the underwater video lights of a company called Scuba Lamp a little while ago. Now, Scuba Lamp is a Chinese company that has been founded a couple of years ago. And what really amazes me about them is that the, the history of the company. Um, the way the company was founded is that some guys wanted to have underwater lights that perform in a very specific way and they couldn't find them anywhere on the market. So what did they do? They just started inventing their own underwater video lights and up to date they have come up with a quite large selection of different video lights ranging from smaller lights for um, amateurs up to really big lights for professional underwater cinematographers. Now you might ask yourself why I personally prefer um, Scuba Lamp as my underwater video light of choice. Now there's a couple of very good and simple reasons for that. Now if you remember from what we said before, the color rendering index is one of the most important features in any underwater video light. Now all the models of Scuba Lamp, they have a color rendering index of 96, which is the highest in the industry right now. Another reason why I like the underwater video lights by Scuba Lamp so much is because they come in a variety of different sizes and power levels. Now they have lamps that suit um, hobbyists or amateur um, underwater shooters like the V4K which outputs around seven and a half thousand lumen and is perfect for traveling when you go somewhere on a dive vacation. This one you can take with you, no worries at all. Uh, if you want to go further up into the professional realm of underwater filming, then you most likely do want to have something like this. This is the V12K. This is their Thunderbolt that outputs about 24,000 lumen each. Now, you might ask yourself, why do I need a underwater video lamp that outputs 24,000 lumen. It sounds like a lot. And yes, you're right, it is a lot of power that comes out of these things. But being quite honest, when you're underwater filming, you do want to have as much light as you can possibly carry with you. Now, to show you this a little bit more in detail and to make it clear why more light is better underwater, what we'll do, we'll put on our wetsuits, and we'll hop into the adjoining ponds that we've got here on location and show you the difference of all these different power outlets and power levels of these underwater video lights. So let's hop in. I'm ready. Let's go. This is our reference image using ambient light only. The settings that we use on the camera are 400 on the ISO and 4.5 for the aperture. As we now go through all the different video lights that we've tested, you can see how the image gets brighter and brighter with each light that obviously has more power in itself. Now looking at all the images side by side, you can clearly see how the V12K with its 24,000 lumen is by far the brightest. Now, if we wanna compare the ambient light to the image of the V12K, we have to actually stop down three stops to get the same exposure as if filming only with ambient light. Back out of the water and let's get into the other reasons why 
I personally like the um, scuba lamp underwater video lights. One of them definitely has to be the burn time of their batteries, the battery life. Now, as you can see, we've got different sizes of batteries here. Now on this smaller one, we've got, let me show you, on this smaller battery here, we get about 30 minutes of energy on the highest possible level. And then we've also got a slightly bigger battery pack, which gives us double the amount of time, so about 60 minutes that we can use the underwater video light with this uh, battery attached to it. Also, by being able to disconnect the batteries itself from the heads uh, means that we can actually use the system in a modular way, so we can change the head from one battery pack to another one. There's also different heads that we can use on these batteries, and it's also a big advantage to be able, once you're in the field and you don't have the time to charge your battery in between two dives, if you have more than one battery with you, you can come up after the first dive, just change the battery, put the second one on there, and you're ready to go for your second dive again. Now something that for probably most people isn't very obvious, but it also is quite important when we look at an underwater video light, is its beam angle. So you wanna try to have a beam angle that is as wide as possible, but it should also be as even as possible. You don't wanna have the beam getting weaker towards the edges, you wanna have a consistent light source throughout the entire beam. And the scuba lamp underwater video lights, they really provide this. They have a beam angle of about 120 degrees, which is quite nice and wide, but probably still not wide enough to be able to just shoot with one single underwater video lamp. So what we always recommend is having a double pack of these, so one on each side, and with a beam angle of 120 degrees, you will be sure to have light in every single corner of your image. And last but not least, a very important factor for me when I choose an underwater video light is how easy the handling of the light is when it comes to turning it on, turning it off, changing power settings, all that sort of stuff. Now, I'm not the person that likes to fumble around with different buttons underwater, possibly even in my dry um, gloves, trying to figure out how to get the light that I wanted in that scene. So for that reason, the scuba lamp underwater video lights are very, very simple. They've only got either a button, like this one here, or the larger ones, they have like a little dial that you can use. So the button turns on the light, and then you've got a dial that you can turn that will then um, change the intensity of the light. Now with the smaller ones, there's only a button, even simpler, you just press the button, it turns on to 100%, Pressing it again, it will turn down to a like a middle power output. Pressing it again, it will go to a low output, which will last much, much longer. So if you want to conserve your, your battery, that's a good option to keep it on that. Um, and then pressing it again, it will turn off entirely. So the handling, very simple and straightforward, and you can basically not do anything wrong with these underwater video lights. And trust me, you can use them even with very thick gloves diving in the frigid cold waters of Switzerland. Me personally, I like to shoot with the V6K, which is this model here. Now, reason why I like shooting with this one most of the time is because it is a fairly compact light. I do travel a lot. Most of my assignments take place somewhere overseas. So for me, it's really, really difficult to convince an airline to be able to take this one with me on a flight. Um, so the V6K is perfect for that reason. It's nice, small and compact, very easy size for traveling, and at the same time it outputs 12,000 lumen. Personally, I think that it's a very, very good compromise between size and weight and the output that it generates with the 12,000 lumens that it gives you um, when shooting with these underwater video light. Another real cool thing about the scuba lamp underwater video lights is that they do come with their own blue filter system that can be screwed onto the underwater video lights very simply. 
Now, I don't really want to get into too much detail why we should use blue filters on our underwater video uh, lamps and why we should use red filters on our lenses when we shoot underwater in combination with the blue filters. Uh, what we will do is show you here a quick comparison of a shot that has been taken using the blue filters on the underwater video lamps and the red filter on uh, our camera lens compared to a shot with no filters at all. And you can quite clearly see how different these images, these uh, pictures look. Now, if you're interested in learning more about blue filters, when to use them, when not to use them, please let us know down in the comment section and we'll be more than happy to make a specific video just about the topic of blue and red filters on your underwater video system sometime in the not too distant future. All right, and that's basically all we had to say for today and the topic of filming underwater and the importance of having enough light with you when you do film underwater. We hope that you enjoyed this very first episode of the Underwater Filmmaking School and we also hope that you did learn something from this first episode. If that was the case, please do hit that like button. It really does mean a lot to us and also consider subscribing to our channel so you don't miss out on any future episodes that we will post on this channel very regularly. Now, if there is any specific topic about filming underwater that you're curious about, that you're interested in, please don't hesitate and let us know down in the comment section and we'll be more than happy to pick up on these comments and to make some specific videos on the topics that interest you the most. Now, before we close this video, I would like to thank our sponsors again. Now, first of all, Fantic, the underwater video and Photoshop that is actually housing us today, that is allowing us to use their location to film this video. And also I would like to thank Scuba Lamp for supplying us with the underwater video lights that we've been using today to show you the different effects of how important light is when filming underwater. Thanks again for watching guys, and I will see you in the next episode.